I've updated some code from the last video and here we have 40,000 cubes and running at somewhere around 200, a little less than 200 frames per second. I didn't change a lot. Let's look at the code rotation system. So here's the updated code. We also have the same two lines that is used to rotate the cube. You can download this project in the links below and here's the old code. So there is a little bit of a difference. Let's go inside out. We have the same function and the lambda expression. Instead of going through every entity with the rotation data, I've added a little identifier. And it's nothing special. I've added my own struct called cube tag. It's not actually a tag. It's just a public struct called cube tag. And just like the translation data or the rotation data, this inherits from the I component data. And that means I can add it to the entity. If I look in the spawner where I create the entity, I've added the struct. This struct doesn't hold any data, but I only use it to filter out the entities that has the struct. So it's mostly the same code, except we don't get all the entities, we only get a certain group of entities. The real difference is here, instead of using the component system, we're now using this thing called system base. And again, we don't have access to know exactly how this works, but this gets called every frame. And notice how instead of just calling a function, we are returning a job and then scheduling it. And if you remember one of the previous videos, this should look familiar. Let's look at Bezier Handler. Here. We're creating a job, scheduling it, and then make sure that it's completed. We get the results and dispose the arrays. This entire process is taken care of for you. You just gotta define the function and then schedule it. You do have to be careful not to use references inside a job. If you do use references, multiple threads might try to change the same value at the same time. Please make sure to read the Unity documentation on this, or at least do some Googling on race conditions. For now, just understand that we don't use references inside jobs, we use copies of data. Instead of referencing the delta time, we just use a float. So overall, multi-threading is taken care of for you, and we just get the performance benefits. And building on everything that I've said, let me show you another scene where I control an entity. So here I have the ECS controller scene. I can have one entity. I can move it around and rotate it. Or I could have 1000 entities and still get no lag. The only difference from the cube is the material and the mesh. And just like the rotation system, I have something called Entity Rotation System. And we're doing the same thing. We just have a different tag, so we're controlling a different entity. The rotation amount, we get it from the input. For that, we have a separate system, Player Input System. And it's the same process that I've been talking about. We have some struct called Player Input Data, some bull values. Depending on your key presses, WASD, we decide how much we want to rotate the player. So nothing's new here, we're just using different jobs to manipulate different sets of data. We simply define the job, schedule it, and let Unity take care of it with multi-threading. How we move the player and the direction of forward and back, we have Entity Move System. Here we just get the player's forward direction and move back or forward depending on that direction. This part might be a little tricky, you're just getting a forward vector. Quartonians by itself is a giant topic, but for now just understand the simple fact that if you multiply a quartonian by a vector, you're actually rotating the vector. Once you have a vector going in a certain direction, the rest is just simple vector math. You normalize it, multiply it by the speed you want, and add it to the player's position. If vectors are confusing, check out my other video on vector basics. And I think I've explained the real basic stuff. The reason why ECS is in this playlist is because I think I'm going to use it in this experimental player controller eventually. I plan on continuously doing more experiments and making more videos, but it won't be entirely based on ECS, it will be based on my player controller, and ECS is just going to be a part of it. But let me know if there's any topics that you'd like me to cover, and I will look into it. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, you can reach me on my Discord server. I have all the links below. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.